Hey guys, um, this is a general reading for Taurus. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you have significant Taurus in your chart, um, or if you just draw into this reading, you could even be like cross watching, like if you're another sign watching for a Taurus that you know. Um, for more of a complete picture, or if this doesn't resonate with you, please check out my videos that I've either already made or will make in the future of your Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, all the stuff I just said. Um, energy is fluid, so this could happen, be happening now. It could have already happened. It could happen in the future. I could read it as love. It could be career. I could read this as you. It could be someone else significant to you. Um, Flip-flop it as necessary. Uh, take what fits. Leave the rest. Don't make it fit if it doesn't fit. Some, none, or all of this may apply. I don't know if I said that. Um, for those of you who inquired about donations and participated in that, thank you so much for that, by the way. The information is in the description box below, same as service information. So please read all of it, including the disclaimer. But if you still have questions, email me. My email address is in the, dis the description box. My PayPal address for services or donations is in the description box. Um, I do not have my shamanic services up there yet, and also I'll be adding a new service of um, crystalline consciousness technique. Um, so if you're interested in any of those, pretty much the CCT one, it um, helps do healing sessions and put you more in your crystalline body instead of your electromagnetic field body, which is, it weighs on you more and it's more taxing on your body. Um, health-wise, emotion-wise, mental, spiritually, all of that. Um, but if you want to know more, and I'll, I'll do a video more in the future about it, but email me about the shamanic services for soul retrievals, destiny retrievals, um, shamanic illuminations, uh, soul contracts, soul essences. If you have cords or attachments or anything in your energy that needs to be taken out or anything energy-wise that should be put in or balanced or moved around or something just feels off, um, shadow contracts, all of that, let me know. Everything else is in the description box below, though. Um, also, please like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell. Um, make sure that you are subscribed and hit the bell, even if you think you already have, because for me and some other YouTubers, um, people have just been being removed, and they, they didn't do it or know why. So just double check, um, because I will start doing more stuff coming out. Um, and I want to start doing lives and stuff. So you'll be notified when that happens. But if you can't contribute or with the reciprocity of energy and give and take and all of that of donations or services, please know that commenting on the video, which takes like two seconds and liking the video, even sharing it is very much a donation to me. And it's something that is within your power to do and to give back for the time and energy I put into this. So, um, Everything that I get, well, most of what I get from the channel I use to learn more and evolve myself to be able to bring back more to you guys. Most of it I can do distant because people need help during these times. So I use it to give back and everything. So thank you so much. Donation information, email information, service information, all description box below except for the shamanic services and the CCT. Um... Yeah, the CCT, the Crystalline Consciousness Technique, um, you can email me about if you're interested in the meantime. And please like, share, comment, subscribe. Okay. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I don't know if it's just really something with me or if it's like a Taurus thing, just what we're going through. Maybe it's everybody. But I know since pretty much almost all the end of March all of April and the beginning of May has just been a big roller coaster in so many ways for me and mostly emotionally. Um, I know a lot of my energies are in my subconscious, so it's a lot of subconscious stuff that I'm having to work through. Um, and then a few days ago, I found out that a childhood friend of mine, um, was found dead in his room. Um, so that was pretty hard. He's a little bit younger than I am. So he's like 36, I think. And it was just very unexpected. Um, so I've been making arrangements and figuring things out to where 
Uh, I have to go down south. Well, not have to. I choose to to go down south to go to his funeral. Um. So that was pretty surprising and sucks pretty bad. But I'm not gonna dwell too much on that. It's just my main thing is is I hope you guys are doing well and keeping your head up. Um, it's just a lot of trying energies, but it's for our best. And, um, there probably will be some more coming, but, you know, it is what it is. So, let's get started with your reading. Um, I'm just going to start channeling instead of getting into the overall energy. I will say, I guess I'll do this first and see where this goes. This card wanted to keep coming up. It's been coming up a lot lately. I did actually try to do the Taurus reading already. And it was like, I think it was the first time I've ever done a video where I was like, I just don't know about this. And I think I was like, it was. I think it was mostly for me. It ended up being, and um, I think I was just too much in my either emotions or my shadow or whatever. And I was just like, this just I don't think I can post this. And then when I, you know, talk to my guides about it, they're like, no. So I did try to do the reading sooner. So just so you know. Um, but this has been coming up a lot. Um, so it could be a decision. I mean, it's obviously partially a decision, as you'll see. But um, in this particular card with this lovers, there is a huge intensity and a huge draw. Um... So it's pretty significant. They're very different. So you, you could be different from this person or situation, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a person either. Um, it can be a situation that's just very significant or you're very drawn to, or it's very meant to be or, um, but just holding this card, I can feel the intensity of it. Whatever this is, there's a huge draw towards it. Um, and the other cards around it is there's making a choice. So the lovers is very much about also making a choice. And then you have commitment. And then under that, need that, you have cleaning house to fly. I think you have to clean some things out so that you can really like go and ascend. Like you don't, it's about not, I'm sorry, my desk squeaks, but not going in the maze of things again, like cleaning stuff up so that you don't go back in here and just stay confused. You just like kind of fly above it all and you're just like, I'm not, I'm not doing that again. I'm not going that route again um, because you see where it's going to lead you to rock bottom, you know, it's a storm. It, it, it'll... I think you really have a choice between I'm sorry, I'm just trying to focus on this energy. There's for one, you have a choice, and I don't know whether one is better or worse than the other. Um, but this will be moving some stuff out. You may have to choose not to make a same mistake again or the same route again. Um, but also, either way, there's some stuff that's probably coming up or continuing to come up um, that is... Maybe like you're seeing stuff to where you don't like you saw what you did on a previous path or you don't take that path again. Or maybe you go with that path a different way to where you rise above all 
the confusion and the going left and right and just going nowhere, basically. Um, yeah, like nowhere would it be like rock bottom and underneath that is storm where it just like falls apart and then you end off on yourself or by yourself again. Um... I don't know. I'm a little confused, to be honest, because there's something I feel like I'm missing. What am I missing? There could also be some of you that um, just as a little side thing, I don't know how much this applies to, but you could be going through something or having to make a decision and there's just somebody else who's there, some somebody or something else that's there that maybe really helps guide you through this time, whether it's literally as a guide, whether it's as somebody that you can ask advice to, whether it's a friend, whether long-term, short-term, I can't talk, long-term, short-term, or just something that through a very trying time, um, like they're there, like for you. So that, I don't wanna say like you're not alone, but in some way, like in some way they they offer help, even if even if it's not them giving you some or whatever, just, just their energy of being there is helping you and or vice versa. Um, you and or somebody else even might be going through a lot of changes or transitions that Either you guys were the catalyst for both of these or you guys, you, them, or both of you were just there during that time and meant to be there for that, at least that time, um, to like learn together, grow together, transition together, figure things out. Something that, um both of you guys had maybe or something in some way it bonded or locked up in in such a way that um um it just really i don't why am i at such a loss for words like it just really i think because it's kind of overwhelming i think that's why the energy I'm feeling is very overwhelming, so much so to the point that it's kind of either hard to speak or more so even it's hard to find words for, to really describe because it's so overwhelming yet so beautiful yet just so much, possibly even somewhat confusing. It's just, it's very overwhelming of an energy. Um... Let's go on with your reading and see where this goes back, but I'm just going to go back to that because I feel like that's, excuse me, why I keep getting stuck or whatever. In the center of your reading, you have the three of wands. So she's obviously waiting for something. Um, obviously, to catch a wave. So, maybe you're waiting for the right opportunity or the right something to come in 
so that you can like almost ride that energy or ride that wave. Mm -hmm. It's almost like she's waiting uh, on doing something, but like it's not, it's not there. I feel honestly like I'm saying the most stupid things right now. There's a lot of doubt and a lot of confusion energy here. There's the three of wands. Yeah. So I said about the doubt and the confusion. Because you have Fox, like where either somebody's being devious or just something's not being seen properly. And then there's the owls, which is very much about... Um, it could be anxiously waiting, but like anxious communication even more so. There's just a lot of anxiety, um, confusion, illusion, like not possibly not being able to see properly. Um, just kind of a little humbug. And what's crossing that, you know, so it makes sense is the hermit. It's kind of really meant to be because it's really trying to force you into, um, you know, going within. There's a lot more of soul searching going on and seeing about things. What is Taurus waiting on? Waiting on something to end or shift and get better. Like kind of going exactly from like the three of wands to the four of wands, which I think was actually in the last reading. So Taurus is waiting. They're kind of in waiting mode and waiting for things to shift and get better, whether it's just within their life, whether it's within a job, whether it's financially, whether it's relationship wise or love wise, they're waiting for, you know, the shift. And in the meantime, you're kind of just patiently waiting with the hermit card. And doing some soul searching. In the foundation of the reading, you have Page of Wands. And you have the King of Wands. See, because I don't know, I don't really think this King of Wands is you. Tell me about the King of Wands. This is a hard energy to navigate. I never have this hard of a time navigating Taurus energy. You guys must be in a really hard energy right now. Either that or I suck. <laughs> I think it's just hard energy to navigate though. <laughs> um...
I think that what all this might be about is that there may have been like a new kind of interesting or inspiration type of passionate beginning to something. Um, maybe with somebody with a King of Wands energy, like where they're, um, I don't know. There's a lot of passion in this guy's face, like he's intently like intently and intensely focused on you or somebody. And there is just a lot of passion and like charisma and honestly sexual energy in that card. Um, it's really being drawn to me though how the lion is behind him. It's almost like this guy is like, he really sees what he really wants. But the courage is not within him yet. The courage or the strength. Um, that might also be a reason for this pause going on up here. The Three of Wands energy and the Hermit energy. Um, whether you or this other person... They just don't, they don't have the strength of the courage right now or something for some reason. Why don't, why don't they have the strength of the courage? Because something has to end. So maybe that's what you're waiting on is something to end. Um... I think you're waiting on either something to transform in your situation or you're waiting on this person, whether this could be you too. I mean, you could be passionately like waiting and wanting to go after something. Um, I think that it's someone else because you came up over here as the rich girl. Now here is pretty much again, the lover's card, the anxious communication or like waiting anxiously with the two owls, like I saw before and then rich Rich, good gentleman. I think you're waiting on something with them to change or end. I'm just going to leave it there. I don't feel like I should say anything more about it. Um, in the past, recent past or past, you have the Eight of Pentacles. And you have the moon. So really working on something that really led to either a lot of confusion um, or just really in your emotions. I mean, she's like drowning in this water. I don't know if she's actually drowning, but she's definitely all up in it. Um, so I think that's why it's also a little bit harder for me to navigate this energy right now. Um, it's definitely not something you can see. You definitely have to feel it more than you can see. Um, and even that's a little bit tricky because um, it's probably for sure going to bring up your shadows in the moon. And it's going to be a little bit harder to navigate your intuition between what is coming up from your shadows and what is your intuition. Um, and also try not to navigate what's, or to, um, discredit or push away what's coming up, negate what's coming up in your shadows that it's also very important for you to see and learn from. But either way, I feel like you are all up in it and really going through cycles. Like not only is this really working on some, but particularly, especially this one is really all about like cycles. Um, so there's some type of cycle that's been being worked through, seen, figured out stuff, just 
coming up. There's a lot of confusion. I mean, just even on the bottom of the deck, you have two of pentacles, seven of cups. I mean, this guy's like, he doesn't know what to pick, what to do. Um, like, what do you want? What to cut away? There's just a lot of anxiety. Two pentacles, seven of cups, nine of cups, queen of swords, nine of swords, five of cups, ten of cups, nine of cups, eight of swords. Um, so there's a lot of back and forth and a lot of confusion and I can really feel it because I think that's why I'm sitting with the way I am. Um, what's crowning the reading or what's in your thinking is the ace of cups and the four of cups. So definitely something emotionally. I mean, it could be you're focusing on you right now while you don't know what else is going on. But I think there's also something that's like kind of stirred your emotions or maybe even your heart chakra, maybe even cleansed out some of your heart chakra. But I think you're really, like the way she's looking is like she's looking at the Ace of Cups, but yet she's sitting in the Four of Cups and here's your Five of Cups energy. So, um... And she's just, I mean, even this one has a lot of, like, magic and colors and whatever. And she's just really focusing on this one. Let's see what that Ace of Cups is. What's the Ace of Cups? Let's use this deck. There's a lot of like shadow stuff here and childhood stuff here coming up. I don't know if this is everybody or just Tauruses. Uh, tell me about those Ace of Cups. What's up with the Ace of Cups? So you have the Hangman. I think you're really going over in your head um so you have the hangman and this one the, the illumination is starting to come in and she's starting to be thought out and um about to come down from it but you have the hangman you have the four of wands and you have the six of cups i think you're really there's definitely a pause going on and some type of either weight or sacrifice or whatever for a shift in perception um, about what you really want, I think. Like, what does your four of wands really look like? Maybe you're just sitting there, like, daydreaming and nostalgia about whatever your four of wands, six of cups is. But I think also in the meantime, it's not just sitting there waiting on it because you're also doing the soul searching with the hermit. It's also looking at it like, what do I want? Like, what is really going to bring me happiness? What have I tried to go for in the past to bring me happiness that has not brought me happiness? What am I trying to do now? Am I trying to do the same thing again? I don't want to go that route again. Do I want to go a completely different route? Is there a way to go the same way, but a different way? Like, same thing, but different way of going about it? There's just a lot of... um like thinking and questioning and checking like the way you're thinking and your perception and your emotions and um, what will make you happy? Like what will really make your heart sing? And again, I can't remember if this was in my last horse reading or the one that I didn't end up posting, but what, what will really make your heart sing? 
because I really just think Tauruses are getting to a point where if it doesn't light you up or inspire you or just make you want to go or sing or dance or just be excited, I just don't think you want it anymore. I don't think you can... I think you're too, like, awakened to go back to just being on autopilot and just, you know, it is what it is, just doing, your your content, you're surviving, or whatever. Like, I don't think that just, like, surviving is enough for you anymore. Like, th in this Four of Wands, it's like, that's a, a big energy I'm getting from this, is like, at that point, it's just surviving. Like, yeah, the Three of Cups, it was cool for a minute. And then it just became surviving. And it's like, oh, that's nice. It's another cup because you realize that it may not be like what you really want. Like you don't want to just have anymore. You don't want to just do anymore. Like you don't want to just survive anymore. You want to have something you really love, whether it's something you create, whether it's a person, whatever it is, you're now realizing that, you know, maybe your heart or your heart chakra is opening to a point where, um, you really want to love like that. That's one of the things with Taurus is where they really shine is when they have something or somebody to really love, especially when it's appreciated, appreciated and reciprocated. But they love to love. I mean, the Taurus is ruled by Venus, you know, so yes, it's about abundance and, um, you know, Empress energy and nourishment and creation and fertility and all that stuff. It's expansive, abundant energy. But it's also a very loving energy. And they love to love. They love to create. And I think it's about seeing, like, what is it that you love? Like, can it be a person? Is that the wrong way? Have you always tried to make it a person and not about creating yourself or something else? And that's where it kind of stuck you. Because, you know, it, it kind of sucks when you put all your stakes in somebody. Like, when it's a person or something that's outside of your control. If you keep the right perspective, it's okay. But Tauruses love to build. And it really sucks when they build and, you know, either they have no control over it, it just goes away, you know, whatever. Um, and honestly, I don't even know if that's really the point anymore. I, I don't even know if Tauruses, like some of them are probably still hanging a little on that fear thing. But for the most part... I think they're just getting excited about life and getting excited about wanting to feel good and wanting to allow that energy to move through their, through their heart and their heart chakra now that it's awake and it's alive and they can just feel it, just that energy just pulsing. Whatever this is that came in, whatever, whatever, whoever, just has really made Taurus come to life in some way inside of them. May probably purge things out too, but at the very least, it made Taurus realize that they want to feel that love and that excitement and that the excitement for life again. Yeah. Because I think we went from being like super asleep and then a lot of us had like certain awakenings and then went through all the fear of like the dark night of the soul and everything like that. And now it's like we're starting to get a stabilization and a security on us that's like, I want to live. I want to live and I want to see and I want to explore and where I've been at is not enough for me anymore. And that might also be a level of making a choice. Like, do you choose where you've been or do you choose something new? You know, you might have been committed to something. Something, someone, or whatever. And whatever it is, there's something passionate and just a draw in this thing that has brought you to life that... I just think the old way of doing things and the old way of exploring and whatever, like, isn't enough. If it doesn't make your your heart beam or just make you feel it all through your veins or in your soul, I, I just think you're like, 
you feel like this about it. Because you want, you want to feel it. You want your heart to come to life. You either want it to, or it has, and you want to feed it more. I almost get this vibe where it's like, um, kind of have a picture of it. I might show it another time. I don't know. It's like, looks like a childlike drawing, but I drew it when I was in my dark night of the soul. And it, it almost, if I imagine a picture of a heart, it's like, there's some parts that still have band-aids on them, but some of them are taken off and they're kind of leaking, but in a way of releasing. Um, I almost feel like, you, it, say you had a few band-aids on your heart, like one or two of them have been removed to where you're starting to purge some of that, but at the same time, it's starting to release some of that pressure and you're starting to like feel again. Even if you've been feeling like you're starting to really feel, but in an excited, curious way and not so much in a autopilot security need kind of way, maybe a little, I hope I'm making sense because there we are still purging. So there is a little bit of that shadow and security need coming up but it's in more of a way of being super excited that you're just drawn and it brings you back to life and I do get the vibe that because of this it is going to be clearing stuff out so you are going to have to work through stuff because of that which kind of spiritually kind of is the point that because think about it if if it wasn't like super exciting or it wasn't like really, you know, engulfing you or capturing you and all your essence, would you want to go through all of that stuff? I mean, you might some if you're really like hard knock on working through your stuff, but it's almost like that push that makes it to where the excitement is way better and way it makes it way worth what you're going to purge and go through. It's like the initiation. It's the incentive. It's the dangling carrot almost kind of in a way. It's it's that energy that comes in that unlocks you. And probably vice versa, to be honest. Um, to not only get you to purge, but to get you excited and lifeful and, and go again. Is it, you know, something forever? I don't know, but... It's intense and very, it, it, it captures you at the very least. And it it's definitely going to make you go within, like I said, because it you're going to have to like think about so many things. You're going to have to question like so many things. You know, I'm pretty sure the thought of like, is this a trap? Is this a temptation? Am I supposed to not go this way? Am I supposed to just like spiritual? Can I have my spiritual journey and still have what I want? Am I just repeating patterns? Because I'm sure like you're going through things. That person might even also be going through things. So it might like resemble even some things where it's, this may not be for everybody, but where it's just making you question or seems like old ways. And you're like, is it? Is it not? You know, is this a trap? Should I have learned from this? Should I avoid it altogether? Can I still do it, but go about it in a different way? Like, there's so many things I feel being brought up. And I think that's also for, like, the, the why the Two of Pentacles. Like, it's just, you know. But in your likely future, you have the Queen of Wands. And you have the Empress. So, are these both you? I think they are. So the Queen of Wands to the King of Wands. I think, I think it's you, but either way, you have the Queen of Wands and the Empress. 
So something lights you up and gets you excited and starts this whole new abundant journey. So many possibilities, so many things. I wanted to know what brought you from what's in your crowning, the Ace of Cups to the Four of Cups into your likely future, the Queen of Wands and the Empress. And you had slow and steady, unexpected visitors. I will say... Pretty sure that this was in the Scorpio April reading. So some of you may be dealing with a Scorpio or somebody with a Scorpio-like energy. Because um, they both had the slow and steady and the unexpected visitors. And it was very much about something of divine coming in to help them out. But even if not, um, I think through thinking this over and going just really slow and steady, slowing down and really looking at your intention, what are you trying to create? What are you trying to birth? What are you trying to go after? And during this time, um, You might even be clearing things away. And it doesn't even have to be people. It can be people, but it could just be energies within yourself. Um, but you have unexpected visitors, meaning somebody or something may come in that's unexpected. Maybe even this King of Wands. And it just seems to light you up on so many different levels. There is a chance this could be two people. Just so you know, a Queen of Wands and an Empress. For some of you, it's going to be you embodying both energies. Some of you, um, you know, it could even be another woman. Maybe this person's other woman coming to you and talking to you for some reason, which catapults and initiates things. Yeah, because you have three of wands and knight of swords. Like maybe you receive some level of like communication or even action. So let's look into this. Lovers, lovers in the star, high priestess. Tell me about this Queen of Wands. Yeah, Ace of Wands. Tell me about the Empress. Yeah. I think this is all you. So the Queen of Wands could be this King of Wands. It could be someone associated with the King of Wands. That cat That's a catalyst to all of this. Coming in maybe even with the King of Wands somehow. But... I think it's mostly you. I think you go first to the Queen of Wands energy. And it's with this Ace of Wands. Like something comes in that's exciting or unexpected. And I think because of that, it brings you into the Empress energy. Like feeling good, feeling on top of your game. Like just feeling good, abundant, creative, fertile. Because you have, clarifying that, the Seven of Cups and the Wheel. It takes you out of the confusion, at least in that moment. Um, and just not being grounded. It, it, things change. Something changes. Through this time of being forced to wait. And possibly even shifting your intention in the meantime. Because you've really been doing that hermit energy and trying to figure out what you want to do and what you want to put your time into that's going to be productive and also make your heart sing, you know? Um, what can you do that's within your control that makes your heart sing? Maybe you don't want to put it into love anymore. Maybe you do. Maybe you want to put it into creating something and some type of passion and being in the loving vibration that way. 
and it brings love into you through you creating love through your own creative stuff. What I'm trying to say to give you an example is, you know, a lot of Tauruses love love. So they'll always try to create it with people and then they get, you know, all of it's gone, right? Maybe somebody had a thought to, you know what, screw this. I'm going to put all my love and my attention into creating something that is mine and within my control. And yes, that could still falter sometime and you have to shift or whatever, but it's all within your own control for the most part. And now you're in the loving vibration by doing that. You're creating love. You're not trying to do it through another person that you have no control over. You're trying to do it through your own projects, hobbies, whatever. And you're creating love that way. And now you are in the love vibration and not in the, you know, lack or fear by vibration. And maybe love actually comes in because you shifted your intention. Like where has intention here? Like we have slow and steady, then unexpected visitor and attention. I think you slowed down. We're forced to go within, look at things. What did I do in the past that didn't work out for me? What can I do now to make it a better way? Nothing's foolproof, of course. But what can I do? What can I learn from my mistakes? And and maybe you do and you set a different intention. And because of that, you're in the love vibration. And now you have unexpected visitors that came in. Um, which also, I think, helps you move forward and, you know, release. But whatever. Uh, let's go on. How you see yourself, the hangman. Which is what was in your thoughts. Because the Ace of Cups came up with the hangman clarifying. So you see yourself on a pause. Sacrificing. Changing the way you're looking at things. Oh my god, that's funny. The hangman came up again. <laughs> um... You're willing to do what's uncomfortable to possibly get a better outcome or to see things a little bit differently because maybe you found through your shadow coming up that you were repeating cycles and you were doing things in a very similar way that you have before that didn't work out for you and you just, you know, just stopped whether you did it or life forced you to, you know, um, I know it's very true for me recently that just life just forced me to just stop for a minute and reevaluate and look at things. And then a bunch of stuff happened, you know, just in life, figuring things out the death of my friend. Um, and it's all for this whole point of this Ace of Cups. Like, so this hanged man in the Ace of Cups for the Ace of Cups up top. Like, it's it's almost like the universe doing its job and working for you, your guide, universe, whatever, to start this and push you in a more proper path, one that's better for you. I mean, we do have Pluto. So that could also be the Scorpio energy, um, is that, you know, Pluto is retrograde and Pluto is one of the ones that, one of the main ones that rules Scorpio. Um, and that's retrograde. So it's really going in. A lot of internal transformation. Really looking at things. So anyways, that's really what you're doing. In your environment, you have the Ace of Pentacles. So something is for sure growing, being planted. It's waiting honestly to come to fruition is what I feel. I feel like it has a seven of pentacles energy with it. Tell me about the ace of pentacles. The knight of swords, two of pentacles. So oh, four of swords or four of pentacles. So this has a very abundant energy, this Ace of Pentacles, with these cards coming up. Really do not. 
Um, and I think the reason why is if you look at this Ace of Pentacles, it has roots kind of coming from it. But they're not really in soil or grounded in, in anything yet. So even though it's trying to grow, this energy of Ace of Pentacles, I feel, has not been grounded yet. It's available in your environment, but it hasn't been grounded. I feel like it's in this energy where there's just a lot of trying to figure things out. Hastiness? Is that the right word? I don't know. A lot is still trying to decide which is like the same as this two of pentacles energy at the bottom. And then there's this four of pentacles as well. So there's you and or this might very well be for both of you if this is about people, but somebody or both is really at a point still where they're trying to figure things out and they're still kind of going back and forth, maybe even try to juggle and balance a lot of things in their life going on at the moment while they're trying to do it and really just still holding on because there is this confusion. It does clear up though. I feel it really clears up. A lot of things really show that. Um, but this is where it's at right now. And this I think is, it's, it's growing. Let's look and see. Like, what? What is making it somewhat grow? Why does it have roots? What's making it somewhat grow? So, I'm just going to say it, um, what I feel on it. I don't know for sure, but I think, yeah, I think through the time, I might be literally looking at like a separation right now, some pause or time apart or whatever. What are you doing? What? I think that through this time and this pause and this, come here. I feel through this time and this pause that through this four of cups energy and the thinking and the missing and the purging and the working through, what, you coming? Come on. Come on. And the mental conflict like the things going on and the purging and the emotional stuff. So you have four of cups, you have five of swords, and then you have the hermit. Through a lot of this emotional and mental conflict going back and forth, the clearing, the missing, the thinking, the on honestly, the is pining the right word? I don't know if I'd quite want to go as desperate as pining, but um, come here if you're coming. That's funny. That might actually be like an energy that a lot of you guys are thinking where you're like, you're waiting because you do have the three of wands or the three of wands where she's waiting. And like my cat is like, man, like it wants to come and it's saying all this stuff, but it's not coming. And then I leave it alone. And it's like, man, and then it wants to come. And I'm like, just come if you're going to come, you know? She's very undecided all of a sudden. If she wants to come, she just jumped down. Now she's like trying to come again. So I don't know if you're just like you or somebody else, the, the, the coming, the going and the figuring it out, like this mental conflict. It's, it's all too much. It, it just became too much for a minute and just needing to like pull back and rest and relax. And there's a lot of things going on. A lot of mental conflict, a lot of soul searching. What do I want? How do I go about this? What's the best way? I don't want to go about it. I don't want to do what I did in the past. And if you are going to start it, you know, you don't want to do it in a way that sets it off on a bad foot. So there's just so, I feel like there's so many aspects to this that it really makes you go within. And what I'm trying to get to by saying all this is that 
I think a lot of this energetic investment is really making it to where this is kind of starting to grow because you're realizing like, well, for one, it's going to grow because it's going to go somewhere. You know, if you're putting all this investment and energy into it, it's going to go somewhere, whether it's towards it or away from it. So that's honestly one of the biggest reasons why. But for some of you, um, you know, you have time to think about things differently during this time and see past a lot of your wounds and see past a lot of your shadows and your ego and maybe even look at the situation differently. Maybe even look at the other person's side a little bit differently. Um, so now you have a little bit more like fondness or like um, understanding for the situation, but even more so what's really coming up is you really miss them. Like you really miss the person or situation or whatever this is. And I think some of you are like either waiting for them to come back or you're just waiting for that next thing in life to throw you where you need to go. Um, it's, it's very much up in the air. There is no concrete thing on this. Um, some of you could even be sitting here waiting for this person to come back and really miss them. And you're still like, I still don't really even know what to think about it. So, I mean, that doesn't mean anything by me saying that. Um, but I think that's also what's growing this is just the separation, actually, weirdly enough, the separation seems to be growing it because of all the soul searching and the figuring it out and going back and forth and missing and you get what I'm saying. How they see you is three of cups with the world and seven of wands. So or they may be going through this. They may be going through what I was just saying, where they're really missing you, going back and forth in their head, and um, doing a lot of soul searching. It could, it's probably you too. Um, and it starts to form like the bond or the attachment because of that. Because like if they really didn't like really care why would they think that much about it? You know, like you would just, poof. so I could be wrong on that. That just could be like my way of thinking about it. But I know I don't normally spend that much time thinking about something if it's not important to me or I don't care about it. So maybe they have some realization about how much they really do care, but they now see you as your kind of they could see you as ending the cycle, but I don't think so. I think they see you as like maybe that you're just done with it. You're ending it. And you're just going off in your own little whatever. Like it could just be like it doesn't have to be as dramatic as you're ending it. Like they could look at it like you're not really communicating. Like the three of cups coming together. That you're just closing up that chapter or doing whatever in your own thing. You're pulling away. Like you're in your own little whatever. You're not allowing anybody to come into your space and your bubble. You are not allowing your peace to be disturbed. You are getting back your alignment. You are getting back your peace of mind. And you're like, no, this, this is my little area. Like this whole hermit. Seven of Wands. Like, she's not letting anybody in to her space. And not reaching out as well. What is this Ace of Pentacles? What is this? So you have Empress. Ten of Swords, Ten of Pentacles.
This is the new beginning I was saying that leads you to your likely future of the Queen of Wands and the Empress. And ending this whole Ten of Swords, which you also have in your likely outcome. It, it brings you great stuff, though. I mean, it's literally like if you look at it sandwiched, you know, it's like the, uh, like the Empress. And then this is sandwiched in between. It's like the end. I don't think it's the end of this. I think it's the end of... Like something or whatever thoughts um, prevented this. This Empress and this Ten of Pentacles. I mean, it could be the end to another situation in order to start something else. But I mostly think it's the end to a way of thinking. To the thoughts that hurt and hold you down. So whether this is a person or an opportunity or whatever, just an energy that's available to you, Whatever it is that's in your environment or coming in, I really feel like it really actually helps release a lot of what you've been carrying and holding against you and maybe what's been causing you doubts or self-esteem stuff or whatever. It, it just takes this away and brings you into Empress and Ten of Pentacles energy is really what I feel. Can you tell me more what it is, though? I know it's different to general reading. Okay, so, I mean, Ten of Pentacles. It's, at this point, it's going to get mad at me. But, um, it's really good for you. It's like a whole new abundant beginning. And it's going to be different for everybody. The lovers. The same decision. And commitment. Some of you, it could be a pregnancy. I was getting that a lot in the other reading. And the Empress is pregnant, like, with the Earth. So, maybe some of you could get pregnant. I don't know. You have the Tower, so it could be a realization. Again, Scorpio energy, also Aquarius energy, Uranus. Um, tell me about this tower. Ten of Cups. I feel like there's something that's just going to blow your mind. Just unexpected. It's almost kind of scary. Why is that scary? Mm -hmm. uh in your hopes is the knight of pentacles so again i think you do want someone to come you know i guess offer something stable and grounded but i think you again you know it always like wanting to go slow tell me about the knight of pentacles maybe taurus virgo capricorn I think you want the back and the forth to end. And this isn't even just outside of you. This is probably very much within you. I think you want the duality and the back and the forth to end and to just have healing and integration and to end a cycle and go. You know, you have the two of pentacles, you have temperance, and then you have the world. You want to move forward in a steady way, a very grounded way, a way that can build with a sturdy foundation. You know, out of even though they're the slowest, the Knight of Pentacles is the most sturdy out of all the Knights because they definitely, you know, cross the T's and dot the I's type thing. And you really want it to be something that has more of a chance of being secure and long lasting because what you don't want is what happened in the past where you thought you were building up the Ten of Pentacles and it ended up being the Three of Swords.
You don't want that again. You want to heal that three of swords. You want your heart to be in again and alive again. Maybe it hasn't been in a while. Maybe you've just been doing and trying to be safe and secure. But your heart hasn't necessarily been alive. Maybe this was the last time your heart's been alive. You get what I'm saying? By alive. I'm not, obviously you're living, so you get what I'm saying. But like excited and alive and like the excitability and curiosity of a child, basically. But with the wisdom of the hermit, an adult. And maybe that's why it's a little bit scary that all this is coming in because whether it's the same person, a different person, same situation, different situation, whatever, the last time that you felt that excited, not to go like boohoo and everything, but the last time you felt that excited, this happened, you know, and it sucked. So again, as you're also navigating this, this is also going to have to be explored. But I think you're like realizing now that, you know, You'd rather take the chance and you are strong enough to weather the storm again if it happens. Maybe you can even go about it in a smarter and a stronger way. Um, but if it does happen, you know, oh well, like you'll be okay. You'd rather take the chance um, on something that makes your heart feel alive than not take the chance and regret it for safety and security that at the end of the day probably will end up breaking your heart anyways because it doesn't make you feel alive and it would have done that anyways whether you're awake or not but especially considering the fact that you are awake awake some you know to some degree and you now are conscious enough to make conscious decisions you now realize that you can't just mosey about like you're a zombie or you're just making like decisions on robot mode. Like you now know if you're doing something based on a fear of security or whether it's because your heart is truly just alive because of it. You get what I'm saying? Um, what's in your likely outcome? you have the ten of wands the ace of swords the four of pentacles reversed and to clarify the four of pentacles reversed okay. you have the ten of swords and the fool so that's awesome because basically whatever this baggage and burdens you've been carrying around there's something that you realize ace of swords and you let it go four pentacles reverse They might also be like four of pentacles, like stuff that like even the other person or situation was holding on to, but you let it go. All this that you've been carrying, you have some type of realization or something or communication or realization. We'll look into that and you let it go and you let this whole ten of swords go, this whole way of thinking and you go into this new full energy and you end, you end that whole, some cycle ends. Tell me about this Ace of Swords. Psst, what? So, King of Wands. Maybe they communicate with you, this King of Wands right here. Could be a Leo. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. They have a lot of fire energy when you have Page of Wands and King of Wands. Either way, they're very passionate. Them really, like, very much so. Tell me more about this Ace of Wands. Yeah, tell me more. Ace of Wands.
some of you, it might be this person. And some of you might realize, like, this might be a whole nother other beginning. Than maybe even what you thought. Which causes you to let go of what you've been holding on to and thinking that you want. It could even be this Knight of Wands. Because you have the Four of Wands reversed, the Hermit, the Ten of Wands, and the World, which is what came up before. Yeah, and then Justice. And then you have the Seven of Cups, and I laid it next to the King of Wands. Um... I feel so many storylines playing out on this. It's really hard to put it into one. Um, I feel like for some of you, something happens just on your own that makes you release all this energy and just go towards a whole new beginning that's very fertile and it just blows up with abundance for you. Some of you, this person comes, whoever this King of Swords is, comes and maybe even tells you their stuff didn't work out with them. They've been doing some thinking. I don't know. And maybe they want to start a new cycle with you or make things right with you. Or maybe at the very least, they just talk to you. I don't know. Um... But you realize that it gives you the closure or whatever that you need, but you're not going down that road. And then even after that, you spit out into your new road. And that's why you're able to clear things is because something about it was made right by this person coming forth. Whether it's the person, yeah, because you have Queen of Wands, like I said, up here, and you have Eight of Cups. Um, whether it's this person actually or situation whether it's another person who has the same energy as the other original person who hurt you or uh, another situation it, I don't know honestly it could be a lot of things but either physically or emotionally you completely let something go I mean, it may not be a great bond. You have the Hierophant, the Seven of Swords, the Five of Swords, and the Lovers. You have the Emperor that also came out with that. It could also be like a, a stage where like you have to like walk away and it pushes them to grow. So... I'm not saying it's like over forever, but I think you like put your boundaries and that's why the Queen of Swords came out earlier. I think you find your confidence, you find your power, you find your love to go and create in the world. You state your place in what you think and you release it. And I don't know what... What's the idea after releasing? What happens with the King of Wands? King of Pentacles. What happens with the King of Wands? Hmm. I think for some of you, like, the, it, it pushes the King of Wands to do what he needs to do. Because he goes from the Four of Pentacles to looking at the Three of Cups, going into Eight of Pentacles, and then the Sun. So he goes into his highest form. So I think you, like, standing up for yourself, I don't know, like, some way that you either say it 
pushes it, it. So I'm just saying it may not be completely done, but it it pushes him into his stuff and what he wants to do, which it pushes him into like the higher part of the sun with the king of wands. It also pushes him into the emperor. And you're the empress, which is I think you both like level up. So this person pushes you, you push this person just by you guys being you. It's very much a, at the very, it could be twin flame, but it's very much at the very least seems like divine feminine, divine masculine counterpart situation. Very contracted at the very least, very spiritual to help evolve both. Uh, what comes after both level up? <laughs> That's so funny. So you have the three of wands again. So you both, one or both of you, go to waiting again. Because it's like there's a strong energy between the two. You know, you have the Hierophant and the lovers. But there's still so much of this energy in between. The seven of swords and five of swords energy. That's just standing in the way of the true genuineness and pure love of the connection. Um... That it's just it's not possible there needs to be a coming together and then probably another separation I mean what the heck but it's needed so it's whatever uh let's look at I'm gonna end this soon what are they what are they waiting on fair ones so empress I think you both still think of each other. Um, maybe even wait on each other. Tell me more about the three of wands. I think you like level up, you work on your stuff, some of you, and then you get like more independent more confident, more sturdy. Um, and then you kind of, it's like, I feel like for some of you, especially if these are like twin flame or divine counterparts, your intuition pushes you possibly back to them or thinking about them or back to them or whatever. And yeah, like wanting to manifest it again. Why manifest it again? Did you start to be stuck again? To help move energy again? You've been going back and forth on things and going within. You see things differently. Yeah, you have the sun. You might, after all the time of taking apart, like the separation again, the leveling up. You may like go within again after things settle and your intuition kind of drops. You get downloads. You realize things. You realize you might have seen things like maybe like not all, like not as they were. As you get more confident and work through your stuff, you see more where like maybe your wounds kind of shaded your perception on things and you're like, oh, damn it, I did it again. <laughs> like you realize you didn't really see that other person's point of view completely or they didn't see yours or 
Um, maybe you guys are even like watching what each other is doing and you're excited about it and you like, like what you see that they're doing and you would love to be able to like talk to them about it, you know, and share and go back and forth. Um, it's just that intense type connection, you know, where you come together and you're drawn and then it's so much and it brings so much stuff up that you have to go away to do your own thing and then. And then you level up, you clear it out, and then your intuition, like, once you get confident again, your intuition brings you all these realizations and downloads, and you realize maybe you didn't see things exactly the way they were, and you could have seen things better, and you have a little bit more understanding of the other person's perspective now, and you really either want to tell them or share with them or be like, hey, or, or you've been watching them, and you want to share what each other's doing, and you're excited or whatever. But I don't know how far that will go. I don't know if that's even in May. But either way, you um, you let a bunch of stuff go. I really get a lot of speaking your truth. That might also be a lot with the Ace of Swords too. And I think I had said that earlier. Like, I think you speak a lot of your truth. And you let a lot of burdens and a lot of stuff out. And you really let a lot go and it really lets go of that Ten of Swords energy and puts you in that whole full energy. And it just catapults you into this whole new beginning of like Queen of Wands and the Empress. And you just start to like grow and transform. And go into another cycle and figuring things out. And I don't know how many times it's going to repeat. But you have dance at the bottom of this deck. I think that whatever this opportunity coming in, it's going to make you so excited that like you want to dance. Because there's silently something that you've really been wanting and maybe even knowing that was coming that you've really been like looking forward to. And it really pushes you and your inner child. Maybe some of you actually play with a child. Children are your greatest teachers. Like either it might actually be a child coming in for you or it just really brings up your inner child and pushes you forward and growing and like you just possibly want to take the risk. I don't know. Either way, the opportunity really makes you excited and want to dance and you've been waiting on it. Maybe even like knowing that it's coming for some of you. Um, let me think about these. I think you kind of blocked yourself off for a little while. These kind of are just other little notes. You have rebellion, vision, devotion, doll. I think you've been really blocking yourself off and blocking your heart. And then now all of a sudden you see things differently with this vision card. And there's a devotion. And this devotion card really has a lot of passion or intensity to it. It's a very kind of sexual energy kind of card. So something has broken your walls down. And allowed you to see things differently and get passionate and excited about things again. And it's really bringing up like your inner child, but also, you know, the way you've been seeing things, your wounds, what you've been going after and all of that. It's kind of just reiterating all of that. You have magic. Make a wish. Believe in miracles. Magic surrounds you. You have nature. Ground yourself. Find a sanctuary in nature. Connect with the elementals. So you really need to ground yourself. And like I said, this opportunity around you is not grounded yet. So I don't know. make sure you stay grounded, but that also needs to be grounded. And then beloved, prepare for your life partner. Prepare for your yeah life partner. Romance is returning to your relationship. Believe you are lovable. <sighs> Turn my light on soon. Tell me about the beloved. Love it about Nine of Wands. It's Hierophant. Love it. 
Yeah. The King of Wands. I don't know who this King of Wands is to you. Um... Whoever they are, though, I'm sorry, my desk is squeaking. I need to get a new desk. But um, <clears throat> it's very likely that you find them very sexy. And they just have this, um, there's like a hunger to them, an intensity, like... I can't get it to focus because of the lighting right now, but and they're probably very charismatic and playful. You have Queen of Wands here. So you guys keep coming up early as the Queen of Wands and, and King of Wands. Uh, yeah. I was just about to say you guys probably have a lot of passion for each other, and then you have this, the devil. But it also came up with the Eight of Cups. There's probably some really crazy, like, soul tie bonds between you guys. Maybe it's something unresolved, because, I mean, this is, this is some intense stuff. And then there was a walking away. So I don't know if it hasn't turned to emotion. Like maybe it still needs to turn to emotion. Maybe there's such a an opportunity of such love around you, you know, with what was it? The Hierophant and the Lovers, but inside it was the Five of Swords. And the Seven of Swords. Um... Maybe it's not grounded enough yet to move out of this lustful energy, this intense. And maybe that's why you have to like, mm, no, and you kind of say your thing. Because even though the person decides maybe to come back, they're still very much in some of their old ways or like primal type ways, which is all great and everything. Like I would, that's awesome. But you probably don't want to connect only from your lower chakras you want to connect from a heart space as well and then when you connect from the heart space then you want to be able to journey into those lower chakras together with each other based on a, a heart level because when you only connect on your lower chakras or like your root chakra or like sexual or lust or even if you're like, oh, it's not lust, I care about you, but it's not truly from the heart space where you're truly open and vulnerable with each other um, it turns toxic, which is exactly possibly what happened in the past. It turned toxic. And maybe you don't want to go that way again to where you either don't totally don't want to repeat that cycle or you're like, yeah, I'd love to possibly do this with you, but, um, not under these conditions or whatever. Like you state your truth on what you need. And it's to push this person. Like, maybe this person has to learn how to love you. I don't know. Maybe they didn't know. Maybe they, didn't know. they never learned. But I feel like something happens that is unexpected. And then you have nature, like, really about grounding. I think something comes to help ground this Ace of Pentacles. And I think the Ace of Pentacles is this King of Wands. And I don't know if it's like meant to stay, but I think, I think that is like what brings quote, quote, love, or at least something more than just lust to the connection. Yeah. Ah, uh, no, no. Um, you have judgment judgment and i think this is yeah king of cups so you might literally really be dealing with a scorpio or this happened sometime maybe around the scorpio full moon or just because pluto's retrograde i don't really know but you have judgment and you have the king of cups both of these in my opinion um i think judgment could be more than scorpio but you've got a, a, quite a few scorpio energy here 
um, coming up. But it could also be like transformation or a type of rebirth or something. But I think it's also turning, like, I think that this King of Wands is the King of Cups. And I don't know if it's beforehand or if it's after, but I think there's something that they see or realize that makes them come from a more heart-centered space. I do not know if that's before or after you say something, but um, some of you probably choose to take a risk with this person. Some of you talk about it and then coming to you and opening up helps release all this stuff stuck in your heart. But then they're not like super ready or maybe you have other things you need to do. Maybe you're not ready. And you have to then kind of like put it on hold or something. It's going to be different for everybody. But I think this King of Wands is this King of Cups. And I think their focus is on you. Like the wheel turns and it it just lights you up. It beams your heart. And because it beams, everything that the walls had stuck in comes out and can be released. And it's like you come back to life. I think I had that in one of the cards. But And then some of your animal cards. It's still light enough. Maybe I can get through this without turning my light on. Um, you have Vulture Spirit. Nothing is wasted. Frog spirit, clear out the clutter. Bat spirit, a rebirth is assured. And then you have crow spirit, co-create with spirit. So just saying, this is for sure Scorpio energy. So even if you're not dealing with a Scorpio, Scorpio energy all over it. Um, to where maybe what happened in the past comes back around to where it's not a waste of time and it helps you cleanse things out and you have a rebirth. Or it could be that, um, you know, even this happening. Like, either way, whether it happens again or not or whatever, um, all of this was for a reason. And all of it came back and helped you out and released all these energies. Like, maybe you realize now why it all happened. You're grateful it happened. Um, whether it works out again or not, like it just all has a purpose and it really cleans out a lot of the stuff that you've been trying to get rid of and that's been holding you back for a while and you have this rebirth. There's a lot of dark energy, excuse me, <sighs> trying to get the hiccups in the sense of the underworld and Scorpio rules the underworld. Um, so it could be a dark night of the soul. It could just be your kind of going, going into your underworld for a little bit and navigating that. But bat spirits really good to have too, because they, they don't see like, I, they can't see in the dark. They navigate by like echo location. So they use like, I think like the pulses and the sound frequencies that come back and vibrate against them. So basically they go more off how they feel and I guess, like, intuition. It's not intuition. But they're sensory more than, like, their sight. So that's a great thing to have if you are navigating the underworld and it's a little confusing or it's a little dark. And then you have crow, crow spirit co-create with spirit. And crows are very much associated, in my opinion, to the underworld. I mean, they can go back and forth. They, they, they are about past, present, and future. So it's not just underworld, but... They are more of a shadowy energy. So, you've definitely got some stuff that you're clearing out. And to be honest with you, I think for some of you, it's not just you. I think it's you and this other person or situation. It feels very you know, divinely guided up and all of that. You have celebration, a positive outcome is assured, celebrate your success, enjoy your achievements, growth, seek out, seek out a mentor or guide, take baby steps as you grow, be willing to learn from others. Possibility, awareness, discernment, expansion, friendship. I think that um, you see the possibilities, maybe with this situation or at least in life, 
but um and it does bring you growth but you also are aware now like going forward maybe you can navigate this a little bit differently this time because now you have a different level of awareness and discernment um all right but some of you though are going to be like super excited and it's going to be really healing and there's going to be a lot of growth here but it's almost like um like some of you this person or situation might come back and they're willing to give you now what you asked for before um but unfortunately like you're a different person like you've leveled up and now you want more like your standards are raised and you're aware that this person is still not I guess where you need them to be like they'll still pull you back Um, it says discernment, all is not what it seems. Stay true to your knowing, keep your dreams a secret. So this person could either be lying or it could just be that even though it seems great and like everything will be great, you know, underneath it all, there are still things that's within this person that would create toxicity in this, or it would hinder you or close you up, or it just wouldn't be good for you and or the relationship. And you're really trying to expand and find people a that are really along your vibration um mostly you want to surround yourself around people who are more like positive and more of your vibration maybe you agree to be friends with this person i mean at the very least you want to go find your soul people that have more of a positive energy but maybe you decide like your intuition says like let's be friends and you just have a lot of passion and uh, compassion I mean. I really think that through being friends, some of you will just enjoy each other's company as friends and continue to grow and, and bounce and play off each other. And then some of you, because you'll be friends and maybe even taking like the ego out of the situation, it will allow it to grow to where maybe it is something that is heart centered and productive for the both of you. So some of you will not be friends and you'll just walk away. Some of you will go right for it. Some of you will be like, like I said earlier, like, no, but thank you. It frees you and you walk away. And then some will choose maybe to like be friends and just go about it really, really slow. And just maybe get to know each other without... the pressure of expectations. You know what I mean? And um, that's going to have its own challenges. Although that's really beautiful. I think some of you, a lot of you might actually go that way if you're able to do it and it doesn't lower your vibration. Um, but this really seems like a twin flame or a divine counterpart type thing. Um, where it's just that push pull come back together and maybe you try to find some happy medium where you're like okay that's cool you know you guys have gone to a no new level together but it's still not really ready and it's not safe for your heart to be fully involved so you either like go do your thing again and have another separation or you just decide to be friends and that's a little tempting and hard too because in my experience it's really hard to be friends with somebody in this type of connection, it takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of patience. 
it takes a lot of inner work and understanding and honestly like a completely selfless love I mean you're gonna go through those things anyways of working through your stuff and I'm sorry and usually the person understands so they're pretty good about it but it's still pretty hard it's it is still a challenge but you grow with it so I mean it could make you to where you can't handle it and sometimes you got to take time just watch your communication though and watch like what you say because even something that seems harmless like could really like hurt the other person especially if they take it the wrong way which you can't always control but um try to always speak your truth but in a way of like just how you feel and what you're going through and don't don't try to put it on the person or guess what they're doing or say what they're doing even if you pretty much know what they're doing I mean it's it's hard but I don't know I I feel so all over the place with this so I am really sorry and I hope you guys know what this is or what's going on um But probably call it, pull one or two more oracle cards and then we'll be done. But I, I really wish there was more of a wrap up here. It's not though. I mean, and I think all this is coming out because May, I, I think it's May holds so much stuff. I mean, yeah, Pluto retrograde. I think if I'm not mistaken, like Venus goes retrograde. Mercury goes retrograde. I think in May, not in June. And then to like part of May and part of June. So these energies will probably be like May, June. And there's so many things bringing all of this up. Let me eat one card. Can you try to help wrap this up a little, please? thinking was going to come up um so you have boundaries i think you and or someone else puts up boundaries here it's just another step of learning process so you have as the main one and then there's three under it you have letting go offering a way out Truly loving another means letting go of all expectations. It means full acceptance, even celebration of another's personhood. Have the courage to set it free. If it flies away, it was never truly yours. If it returns of its own free will, then you know for sure it was yours. And then you have taking, I think this other card means taking a risk. A new beginning, release from the past. You may have a fresh start any moment you choose, for this thing we call failure is not the falling down, but the staying down. And then, let's see what story unfolds here. Choices, risk, consequences. We may often be intrigued by a what-if scenario. This card depicts curiosity, temptation, and wanting to know. It is natural to want to know, want to try, and the only way to find out is to try. It's through such processes that we can grow and avoid stagnation, that there are causes and effects.
waiting for the right moment. I don't know if I showed you these. Like here's this one, letting them go, releasing in the past, starting new. Pandora's box, basically, consequences. And then patience, waiting for the right moment. Time is but the stream I go f a fishing in. I drink it, I drink at it, but while I drink, I see the sandy bottom and detect how shallow it is. Its thin current slides away, but eternity, eternity remains. The ballerina casts a golden line in lore with which to capture a desired goal or item. The process is calm and planned the pace leisurely. There is no rush nor looming deadline. She will know when the right time has come and the moment is appropriate. A kingfisher, a harbinger of tranquility accompanies her and together they will wait. We must also be wary of being too indulgent and devoting too much time waiting for some imagined perfect moment, person, or thing. Worthy opportunities may be lost if they are overlooked in, a pre in anticipation of some intangible better option to arrive. So, I don't know. I think this is really showing... Um, I think it shows exactly what I was saying, where it's like it comes together, there's a release... For some reason, there's another separation. And like both level up and then they kind of go through the phase again of like watching, missing, seeing what the other person's doing. It's like the energy comes in to catapult and push forward. And then once they do and you're going and then once you start to get stagnant again, Possibly, like, you start to think about the other person and, like, watch and see what they're doing. And then you're, like, need them to come and push and catapult you again. And or as you start to get better, you just, like, really miss the person and you want to, like, share the stuff that's happening to you with the person and what you're doing. Um, But they go on a new beginning and let the past go and then... It's like all these things are released because there is this coming together. There is this eye to eye seeing moment. And because that opens both up, one or both up, especially in the heart space, all these things come up, even the things that needed to be released. And then you also have like the hope and, you know, the end of Pandora's box. But it's like it brings up more shadow, more intensity, more fear, more stuff. And then it's just showing that it's not ready. And then time goes apart to grow and whatever again, until maybe the next time that it's the right time. Um, so I don't, you know, and then you got to go back on your journey and do your thing. And there you go on another cycle. So I don't know that, Pretty much wraps up exactly what my reading was about and i don't know why it sucks more me saying that now than when i was doing the reading but i mean damn i mean i guess when you pick a journey of um just evolving like i don't know what else is supposed to come from this but at the very least this person very much was contracted to like just push you in all the ways that you needed to evolve or be that spark in the moment where it just gets stuck each time. And I mean, that's beautiful at the same time. It's literally like this, like these two cards really sum it up, you know, where it's like, it's this intense and only this intensity can do that to you. This type of connection that is this intense, but because it's this intense, it always also leads to this. It's like that bittersweet, stuff it's that stuff that is so intoxicating that you want to be consumed by it but at the same time because of that I don't know if 
always, or at least because we haven't learned to navigate it properly, it becomes toxic or too much because, you know, you can't just release it all at once. You need to do in like stages. But so I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether it just always goes to that stage and you always need to pull away or if it's just eventually once it's not so much harsh and shadowy things in there, but also, you know, both people need to know how to navigate those energies. So, and there's probably things that they have to do and there's a whole bigger picture there. So you get what I'm saying. I know you guys know whoever this resonates for knows exactly what I'm saying because it's like on one hand you get kind of upset and you're like, I don't get it. This sucks. What's the point? Like that's like your human egoic side. And then the other part is like, I get it, you know, because when you have an, when you have an, um, a, I don't want to say attachment. Why do I keep saying attachment? It might be an attachment. When you have a bond that's that intense, I mean, it consumes you. And on one hand, that consuming alone is super hot and sexy. But if you came here to do like a mission, right? And you have work to do while you're here and you have more evolving to do, um, I don't know, I don't know how feasible that is to be able to do that. It's that type of intensity that can push you and catapult you, but I don't know if you can like maintain or do what you're supposed to do while you come here. Maybe there is, if you find a way to be able to really have discipline and have boundaries, um, but maybe not. Because it's that type of connection where it's like you just lose all grounding and it just consumes you and it's like a drug and you just think about it all the time and you forget about yourself and you forget why you came here. So it's it's weird. It's that thing that shows you that fine line between, you know, needing to have balance, like indulgence, overindulgence and not. I mean, it's. On one hand, it wakes you up, and on the other hand, it has the power to make you forget who you are. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, for a short period, it, it, it enlivens you and wakes you up and pulls you out of your everyday slumber and pulls you so far into your soul that you have to, like, look at things and think about things and wake up. But if you stay in it too long... It's like you get lost in like a dreamland or a fairy tale. You get consumed by it and then you forget again who you are and why you came here. Everything that you want to be about is that. It's You get what I'm saying. Like at first that intensity and that draw brings up all that stuff and you work through it. And then after that when you're like, ah, screw it and you go towards it, then you just forget and it, it becomes counterproductive. Is there ever a point it doesn't become counterproductive? I hope so, but I don't know if it's just one of those things that I don't, I don't, I don't know. And everyone's is going to be different. Some people might never, some people might just be work together. Some people might come in like the last year of life together. Like some may never come together and it was just meant to catapult and push each other in the directions they were supposed to go or to get out of being to sleep and wake back up, but then to go away again so that you can go and do what you needed to do within that cycle. Um... I mean, there's so many lessons, the lesson of like self-love, discipline, detachment, to love other things, to love yourself, to love your creation, self-worth. I mean, this truly really wraps up a lot of like divine counterpart relationships and twin flames. So anyways, I don't know how super like informative this was because this is like like a traditional one of those types of readings, but I don't know if Taurus is right now or just really going through that because of everything going on right now. And it's just meant to, but either way, you're going to have some type of realization and you're going to have some type of release. 
and you are going to level up and remember who you are and you're going to become free again. You're going to be free to be you. And go into this Queen of Wands and Empress energy. Which is awesome, to be honest with you. I mean, at the end of the day, I would hope to be liberated. Liberated from this. And that Eight of, eight of Swords energy that always comes up. So just try to remember to like... Just have gratitude for this situation or or connection because even though you may want something else out of it, like right now or ever, there's a bigger picture of what it's meant to come in and do. A bigger picture of something that you either are meant to do or to help out or that might bring you something more joyous or... Like, this just feels like a really spiritual connection to me. And I'm not sure if it will ever be grounded. Am I, am I not? But it's not grounded right now. Not in 3D reality. This, to me, this feels very spiritual. Like, just out in the wind and the whatever of things. And I think that's why you have to cho choose, like make a choice with the commitment, cleaning house and choosing to fly. And then it says rock bottom and storm. Like, I think that you choose you. In the face of almost everything that you think you would want. It's almost like where you had... I think it was like the Hierophant and the Lovers and then sandwiched in between. It was the Seven of Swords and the Five of Swords. Like even though it's like what would be presented as everything you would always want. I think you see something that it's either not ready or you see where if you go into it now you see what would happen again. Maybe you see that you're not even ready. And... You choose you, either by walking away or just being like, can we just be friends or whatever. And then that also possibly brings up all their stuff because now you just possibly rejected them. I don't know, but and it may not. Some of you might actually go with or choose the person. Um... So it's going to be different for everybody. If you want to know how to navigate this, please hit me up for a personal reading. Um, all the information in the description box below. If you want to know if this applies to you, like probably 50% of it applies to people um, when I actually pull the energies. Like, so don't like just assume it does for hopes, like contact me to see if it actually applies to you. Um, or how to navigate it or maybe to help with your perspective so you don't like get stuck or whatever you get what I'm saying so just hit me up for a personal reading or a live reading or any of the healing sessions or whatever if you need help with any of this um please like share comment subscribe hit the bell make sure you're subscribed okay because some people thought they were and they're not um and hit the bell because I put out other types of videos and I will start going live soon um donation information paypal information it's in the description box below as well the services if you're interested in shamanic services or um the crystalline consciousness technique look it up i can i'm gonna do a video where i tell more about it it's another type of like healing way of doing things puts you in your crystalline body instead of your electromagnetic field body makes it easier on your body puts you in a the higher energies we're ascending to basically um let me know email me i will put it up soon though but in the meantime, let me know. Uh, I love you guys. I'll be seeing and talking to you soon. I'm sorry I seem kind of out of it. You know, I'm, it's either everything going on or I'm a Taurus too. You know what I mean? So, um, anyways, I love you guys and I'll be seeing and talking to you guys soon. I know I'm repeating myself. I'm sorry. Bye. I love you.